welcome back to the Google Analytics tutorial series. I'm Matt Landers, and in this tutorial, we're going to implement a custom event. Now, in the previous tutorial, we implemented a recommended event, the share event. And that's an event that's already known by GA. But a custom event is an event that's specific to you and your business, and GA doesn't know anything about it yet. And there's a few extra steps that we need to do to make that data available to us in our reports. All right, so what I've done to our demo website is I've created a newsletter signup. And what we want to do is anytime someone signs up for the newsletter, we want to fire an event, a newsletter signup event, and then that data will be made available to us in GA for reporting, segmentation, audiences, and all of the above. All right, let's dive into our demo website and make it happen. Okay, we're back on our demo website where we've made a couple of changes so that we can test out custom events. Now, one of the changes that we've made is we've added a little bit more content, making the site look slightly better, which it should progressively get better over time. Uh, but we've also added uh, some forms to sign up for a newsletter. So if we scroll to the bottom, we'll see in our footer we have a subscribe to our newsletter form. But we also have a link to a newsletter form where you can sign up for the newsletter on its own page. And what we want to do is we want to create a custom event to track when newsletter signups happen and then what form was used for that sign up. That way we can know which one was most effective. All right, let's dive in and make that happen. Okay, now we're in Google Tag Manager, and this is where we're going to fire our custom event. Now there's nothing that we need to do in Google Analytics in order to create a custom event. We just need to start sending a new event. So it's very similar to what we did for recommended events. But let's go ahead and go through the process and make this happen. One of the things that we want to do as well is track which form was used to submit the newsletter. And in order to do that, we need to enable some variables. So if we go to our variables, we can go to configure, and we'll scroll down and we want to select form ID. Whenever the newsletter form is submitted, we're gonna capture the form ID and submit it as a parameter. All right, we'll save that. Now let's jump over and create our tag. So we'll go to tags, we'll say new tag, and we'll name our tag J4 event newsletter sign up. Now we'll add a tag configuration, which we want a GA4 event. We'll choose our website for the configuration tag, and then we need to name our event. Now you can name your event anything you want, but I'd recommend naming it with lowercase letters and underscores for spaces. This is to follow the standard pattern that you see for recommended events, so it doesn't look completely different from everything else that's coming through. So we'll call it newsletter underscore sign up. And we also want to create a parameter here because we want to know what form was used for the sign up. That way we can evaluate the performance of forms on different pages or whatever location we add them. So let's go to our event parameter. We'll add a row and we'll call it form underscore ID. And then for our value, we're going to click the little brick and we're going to choose the form ID, which is what we just set up in the variables. And what that means is that it's going to take the ID of the form element in HTML and place that value into our event parameter so that then we can use that in our reporting. Now, if you don't know your form ID, that's okay. You can ask your developer of your site to find that for you. Um, or you can go into your site and use the Chrome developer tools to find that as well, which we will do real quickly when we look at our site. All right. So now we have our tag configured. All we need to do now is decide when it's going to actually fire. And we're gonna do it on a new trigger. So we'll create a new trigger for a form submission. I'm just naming this trigger. Uh, and we'll do it for news, we'll call it newsletters. So any forms that are submitted that are for newsletters, we want this trigger to fire. We'll create a new trigger. We'll scroll down and we'll choose form submission. All right, we don't want this to happen on every form because maybe we have sales lead forms and other types of forms on our site. We only want this to happen for newsletter forms. So we go to some forms, we'll choose that form ID and we'll make sure that it contains newsletter. Now you'll need to check on your site what the form IDs are so that you can uh, properly fill this out. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll save our tag. And now we should be able to test the tag and see it working. All right, let's go back over to our site. 
Okay, before we publish the changes, we're actually just going to preview this on our site. So we're going to click the preview link in GTM. And that's going to pop out and ask us where our site is. We're testing this locally right now. Uh, but you would put your own domain in here. And we'll go ahead and say connect. All right, so now we have our tag assistant up and running and we'll be able to see all of the events that are firing uh, as we go through from our new GTM configuration without having to publish those live just yet. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down and we'll see our uh, subscribe to newsletter form. Now, we wanna know, I wanna show you where that form ID is. So I'm gonna do Command Option I and that brings up the debugger in Chrome. I'll scroll down a little bit since the window gets smaller. I'll select this icon over here, and I'm just going to select the text box. Now, in our elements, you'll see that we have this form. That's an HTML form, and it has an ID. So this is the form ID for the variable that's going to get filled out. And you'll see that this particular form says newsletter form footer. So that says that this newsletter is in the footer, and we just named that ourselves. But then if we go over to the newsletter form on the newsletter page and we look at that form name, we'll see that it's different. It's just called newsletter form. So now whenever that newsletter sign up fires, it's going to send in that form ID each time so that then we can tell which form was used in order to so sign up for the newsletter. All right, that's pretty cool. Well, let's get out of the dev stuff and let's sign up for a newsletter. So we'll just do test at test.com. We'll submit. And now we should be able to go over to our tag assistant and see what has happened. So you'll see that we have our tags have fired, the newsletter sign up has fired, and our configuration tag is fired. So that's great. It's working. So now we should be able to go over to Google Analytics and see this in our real time reporting. So let's jump over there. All right, now we're in our real time reporting for Google Analytics. And if we go over to the right and scroll down, we will see all of the events that have fired. And one of them is our newsletter sign up. And if we click on that, we'll be able to see a different parameters that were passed in. And we see our form ID, and then we see our newsletter form. So we submitted this form from the actual newsletter page and not from the footer. So let's just go ahead and just for sanity check, let's make sure that this works whenever we use a different form. So we'll go back to the home page and scroll down. We'll use our footer form. We'll subscribe. All right, let's go back over to analytics. We should see a new sign up event. Not quite yet, almost here. Waiting, waiting. Waiting. Oh, and now our newsletter sign up has arrived. We'll click on that. We'll go to form ID and we'll see that we have one from our newsletter form and one from our newsletter form footer. So this is great. Our tag is working. Our custom event is now making it into Google Analytics. Now there is one small caveat. We won't be able to do a whole lot with this data until we create a custom dimension and metric. And we'll be covering custom dimensions and metrics in a different tutorial. Now keep in mind, the data that you see here in your real-time report won't show up on your actual reports for about 24 hours while GA processes that data. All right, hopefully you got a lot out of this video and this tutorial. We learned how to create custom events, add custom parameters to that as well, and get that data into GA using Google Tag Manager. Now keep in mind, you could use GTAG or a measurement protocol as well, but for this series, we're really focusing on Google Tag Manager as we think it's the best way to manage your tags on your website. All right, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial video. Until then, happy measuring.